Amen. Woo, praise God. I'm sorry I had to miss that five degrees this weekend, but <laughs> heartbreaking. So, uh, <laughs> have no worries. It will return. Huh? I do see evidence that it was here. Wow. So, uh, it's good to be back, and we did have... A Saturday night service, a Sunday service, and then we went home, and Monday and Tuesday, they put a roof on my house. Uh, they had to replace 14 sheets of plywood, or OSB, so it was, uh, what was under the, sur uh, what was on top, it, it was worse under, when you peel back the layer, there was a lot of, everywhere there was a vent, there was stuff that was leaking and rotting, so, but it ought to be good to go now. And uh, so praise God, we got that done, and they did a good job, and so uh, God is good. Now there won't be no more dripping in my house. <laughs> She'll be very happy. <laughs> so, Lord, we bless you tonight, God. We thank you for what you're doing, and Lord, we just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. Lord, we stir up the gift of God that's inside of us. God, we stir up those rivers of living water, Lord. Permeate the atmosphere, God. Open the heavens, Lord. Reveal what you want to reveal, God. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say, Lord. Shoot, it's quiet in here. Karabo Korienda Ba Sadarabo Korea Taraba Baba Shatarababa Baba Lamba Baba Karia Taraba Baba Kariendo Roba Shatarababa Sekaraba Kariendo Roba Shatarababa Sarambo Korea Taraba Baba Shekataraba Baba Monda Raba Shatakaraba Shataraba Sandaraba kariendo raba shataraba, seka tarabo shataraba baba ha ha, soko taraba kande raba shata, me karaba shata. Send your fire, Lord. Send your fire, Lord. Woo! Let let it rain down from heaven, God. Ha ha, raba shata. Woo! Karabo sataraba shatarabo. Randararaba shataraba baba. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You endue us with power from on high, Lord God. Ah, when we are weak, we are strong, Lord, in you. Ha ha. Rabo koriataraba shataraba sata. Sekataraba shata. Woo! We give you the glory and the praise, Lord. We give you the glory and the praise, Lord. That's the one thing that was in common that I saw at Toronto and Brownsville where somewhere before service there was a thunder of people praying in tongues. Yeah. In Toronto there was an upper room and in Brownsville they had a room set apart for the intercessors. But both of them, it was like thunder coming before the service. And even though the services, I mean... In Toronto, they're laid back, no ties, no suits, uh, vineyard music, style music, and most of their preaching was basically on the Father's love and the goodness of the Father, and, but then they'd come out, line, they'd line people up on lines, pray for them, bam, they're hitting the ground, lives are being changed. Brownsville, suit and ties, Assembly of God, preaching the hellfire, damnation, get right or get left. Run to the altar, no lines, it's a mess. But same thing's happening, you know, it was amazing. But the, the similarity between the two was there were rooms with people praying in the Holy Ghost. That was the, 
That was the spark. That was the fire behind what was going on was right there in that boiler room. That, you know, so it wasn't so much we've got the right song to sing or we're dressed just right or whatever, but there's power coming from heaven. Yeah. Woo, I want to read a couple of definitions of revival. Revival is a season of glorious disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Sounded real good for a minute there till we got to the disorder. Okay. Woo. A sweep of the wind which sets the seas in motion that makes our ironclad brethren now lying quietly at anchor to roll from stem to stern. It is the fire of heaven so intense it melts the most stoic hearts. And this fire falls first on the saint and then on the sinner. The reader of the reports of the awakening in 1904, here's how they describe some of the phenomena that was taking place. In Wales, it was called a hurricane of prayer. In India, there was a noise like a distant thunder. Woo! In Korea, the noise of the surf in an ocean of prayer. In Africa, the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Whoa. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Charles Finney said revival is an infusion of the spirit in the body which threatens to become a corpse. You can't rescue something that didn't once have life. Therefore, first uh, resuscitate the believers. Another revivalist wrote, there first must be a quickening of the saints at the root for there to be a saving of sinners and bearing fruit. Revival is a divine intervention in the normal course of spiritual things. In the normal course. It is God revealing himself to mankind in awful holiness and irresistible power. A fearful holiness, but there's a power that pulls you right in like, uh, regardless of what the cost, regardless of what I have to lay down, regardless of what I do, I have to have that. There's a magnetic pull from heaven. It is such a manifest working of God that human personalities are overshadowed and human programs abandoned. It is man retiring into the background because God has taken the field. Ah, yeah. (laughs) Woo. It is the Lord making bare his holy arm and working in extraordinary power on saint and sinner. Costly confusion. The great deceiver knows if he can keep the truth from today's Christians, they will not diligently aspire towards something they have never experienced. I mean, most are not familiar with revival, so they're not aspiring toward it because they really don't know what it is. They know nothing about it. Hence, the explanation of why Christian bookstores are filled with books on Christian dating, dieting, dancing, romancing, and financing, but few on revival. God's people are indeed destroyed for a lack of knowledge. (laughs) Dieting, dancing, romancing, (laughs) but few on revival. I'm persuaded that when the church discovers only God can hold revival and that revival is what we need, she will vigorously cry again unto the Lord to secure one for our generation. I think we're beginning to find out that's what we need. And we've been crying out, God, you have to do something. Lord, we thank you for what you've been doing, God, but we know there's more. That's the 
awesome thing is when we read these testimonies and we see videos, we know, God, there's more, and that's what we want. God, there's no limit to what heaven has. Woo! <laughs> there's no limit to what God wants to do if he can find a man or woman sold out to him. They'll lay it down, or especially a church, a few people. Man, if you can do it with one, what about two or three or five or ten or thirty or forty? I mean, most of these revivals we read about, it was one or two started praying or declared we're going to have prayer. And then it, it gained momentum and more momentum and more momentum. And then the heavens were burst open and, whoo, it rocked the land. I want to read one scripture, 2 Kings 13, that pretty much identifies it said that you can't resuscitate something that hadn't been alive already and then died. <laughs> and we read about uh, uh, Elisha, and we, we preached on where he told the king to strike the ground. But the last scripture, verse 21, it was as they were burying a man. So that man had been alive, but now he's dead. Amen. We agree on that. That suddenly they spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something got on him. I mean, if a dead man's bones can cause revival, praise God. Woo! I once was dead, but now I live. Amen. Something has happened to me. He, he revived and stood on his feet. I bet the group that put him in there was about to have revival too. When he came back out of that tomb, I was like, Woo! I bet there was a whole lot of shouting going on. See, you can tell, well, you don't have to get... You don't have to get passionate about this. I've never seen revival where people didn't get passionate. I mean, the, the problem that happens is the church loses its passion. It loses its passion for souls. It loses its passion for the poor, for the hungry. It loses its passion to fulfill the Great Commission. But when revival, that passion is restored. Man, there's something that Holy Ghost and fire gets on people and, and restores them back to what God really wanted. I mean, I don't know anybody that really got born again that when you got born again, you weren't a little bit excited. I mean, if you can't remember when you got saved, you might not have got saved. And then if you can't remember when you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, <laughs> you might not have really got baptized. Something happened, something stirred up inside of you. And I mean, that's what revival, like we talked about last week, when people at Brownsville came to an altar and said, I, I think I got born again, again. Because that, that new, fresh love and passion came back into them that had become stale. Had, you know, we need to drop this guy off at the tomb because he can't run with us anymore. I think he's dead. I just dropped him off at the wrong tomb or the right tomb. So, Lord... <laughs> Let, uh, if this has to be a tomb place where whoo, something holy is, Lord God, there's an anointing, God, that when people are dropped off here, yeah. it's like at Brownsville, sometimes they pick people up on their first offense from breaking and entering or doing something. They say, well, you got two choices. You can go to revival or you can go to jail. They'd take them down there and drop them off, <laughs> made sure they went in the door. After that, they usually didn't see them no more. Wow. Woo! They dropped them off at the tomb there, and they, got, they touched Elisha's bones, and they got revived. And they got, you know, that deception was wiped off of there because we're being deceived by the devil. He's put a veil and blinded 
to where we don't know what's right or what's wrong, and that veil was ripped off. Ooh, we came into our right mind. I mean, like the Gadarenian demoniac came into his right mind. Man, we need a, we've got a nation that about 50% of the people need to come into their right mind. 50% of them, I think, is crazy. They're like, what are y'all doing? What are you thinking? <clears throat> so we're going we're gonna to try the, the uh, video again so you can see the full video of Honey, Where Are We From? I mean, it was good last time. It had yeah. baptisms, a testimony. I mean, it, it's all good. You really can't mess up when you put one of those videos on. Something good is about to come on because God's in it from... The begin. I mean, you could just video the line out front, and you'll get Holy Ghost goosebumps just looking at the line. It's like woo, because heaven's out there. People are hungry and thirsty, and people come out of there reach, uh, alive. They went in almost dead men, and they came out revived. Revival. Uh, it's not necessarily just about adding people. You know, on onto the row or making a few more converts. I think it starts like we read a while ago, reviving the saints. Getting them back to why do we want, why would we want to bring converts? Why would God want to bring converts in a place that's dead, dry, dull, and boring? He wants to bring new people that are getting born again into a place where there's life. So that you know, here come in here and be dead like everybody else. There, I read years ago a, a church in England, uh, they wouldn't even let them go to their church for the six, first six months. They mentored them in houses, took them out on streets, witnessed to people, talked to people, laid hands on people <laughs> before they would ever let them go into the church. I don't know if their church was dead. <laughs> you know, <I> mean, <laughs> but they wouldn't even let them. They said, we want them to get... Fully, fully on fire. So we don't want no opportunity or chance for the water, for somebody to come and pour cold water on that fire. Uh, so, hallelujah. So this, this video we're going to try again here in just a second, but what a powerful testimony of, um, honey, where are we from? Yes, Sunday water baptism. There's some other things going on. Get baptized or get baptized. We saw those baptisms uh, last week on here, a few of those things where heaven just fell in the baptistry and we're wanting heaven to fall again. We baptized some people uh, Saturday night down in Arkansas and whoo, they got a little bit wild. Yeah. Praise God. <clears throat> so... Uh, if you hadn't been baptized in, you know, three or four months, might, <laughs> might, might ought to get baptized again, especially if you hadn't got baptized since COVID. You know, I, I think baptism is a, is a real cure for all COVID. <laughs> Amen. Roll them. Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is Sandy Fields, and I'm a pastor's wife, and I'm from, um, I'm from, um. I know the feeling. <laughs> Honey, where are we from? Wow. I'll 
I'll tell you, friend, the Holy Spirit's on this platform. Let him move out there. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Woo! Lift your hands, worship the Lord. My, 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 he's up here. Lord wants to move out there in the audience also. Let him begin to move in the audience. Woo! My, my, my. Woo! Glory! My, my, my. When she, when she jerked, when she was standing there and jerked, I felt the Spirit of God hit that woman. I felt the Spirit of the Lord hit that woman. He just like that in her face. Where's her husband? Where are y'all from anyway? <laughs> Come on up here. I'm sorry? Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I just want to tell everybody, revival's broken loose in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. My wife and I pastor a small, started small, it's growing. Liberty Word Church is a non-denominational church. And uh, this is just kind of a, uh, we were down here for the, uh, uh, boy, this started last Sunday. This is forgetting what you're going to say stuff. Uh, <laughs> this started last Sunday with her. How, how are you doing? I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I wish y'all could feel what's up here on this platform. I just wish you could feel it. <laughs> Man. Let's move over this way. We got you. What, what's going on in your church? What, what's God doing in your church and your ministry? <laughs> Something kind of like this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Has God finally touched your wife? Yeah, she does this every once in a while. That's just kind of the way she, God falls on her and she just kind of goes. I think we all ought to be like that. You know? Man, don't fight it. Just let God breathe on you. What'd you say? Just let God breathe on you. He wants to breathe the breath of life spiritually into everybody. He's trying to resurrect the church. He's trying to bring it out of a state of sleep into a state of being awake. To him, not to religion, not to a lot of programs, but to a God that's alive that wants to breathe on his people to make us a witness to this world that's sick in sin and on its way to hell. We've programmed them to death. Now we gotta revive them with the spirit of life. But we gotta be alive first. <laughs> Pastor's losing it. Whoa. <laughs> I, I don't know what God's gonna do in, in our in our uh, Church. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, 
how stupid that makes you feel to forget what you're talking about? <laughs> but God's just really in the last, oh, about the last year has, has been preparing us. Uh, our hearts for souls, our hearts for missions, our hearts for... There, there's a young man from uh, down in the southern part of the state. He's right over there. Uh, man, I'm telling you what, God's going to build an army out of them guys. That's where our heart's at, is for those that everybody else has forgot. They need God, you know? Come on over. come up here. Man, I'm telling you, it's strong up here, folks. Seriously. It's strong. I want to, I want to, I want to. <laughs> I want to tell you something that, um, you know, we, we pastor a church in, in Cedar Rapids, and being a pastor's wife, it's like, you know, I felt just raped by the church and not by the world but by the church. And the church Say that again. I just felt like a rape victim, you know. And when I would look out at the church it was like you were my enemy. And till I came to the pastors conference and you stood up here and I was back there and you just took your hand and you said I'm going to speak a blessing over the pastors and their wives. And you just moved your hand like that. And you said, I break the curse. And you guys, I felt like I've been an egg, you know. And it's like, what good is an egg if it's not cracked open? It can't be scrambled. You can't fry it. You can't poach the sucker. You can't do nothing with it. <laughs> Looks like your words has come back pretty good there. But when he, when he broke that curse, I felt like the egg was cracked. Woo! Yes, Lord. God's healing the church, church, because he doesn't want ministers to minister. He wants them to minister a fresh, fresh word. And God's doing that in the church. And, and last night, you know, the first, my, this is our second, second time we came down. But the first time we came down, I sat here with my mouth hanging open, you know. And I had to keep closing my mouth because it was like, man, I have never, ever seen anything like this before. You know, people doing what you're doing. And, um... <laughs> And I said to my friend, you know, we have Dick and Renee Van Kirk 40, their assistant, assistant pastors at our church. Could they come? Yeah, she was up here one time. Come on up. Come on up. Renee, come on. Come on. <laughs> Chastity, or what's her name? Charity, and Chastity. That's Stevie, and I'm Johnny. <laughs>
uh, you know, come running, come running, come running to the mercy seat. And, you know, my whole life, my whole Christian walk, all I wanted to do was to intercede for y'all. You know, just be that intercessor that God wants for the hurting, for the church, you know. And, and being hurt myself, it's like I couldn't do that to the full capacity. But last night when, when Chastity um, sang, you know, come running to the mercy. You had no idea the story would be left up to you to tell, did you? <laughs> no, sir, I didn't. It um, ends up like this quite often. <laughs> Praise God. We've had... Uh, our, our, our church has been breaking down walls. Gloria a ti, Padre. Gloria a ti, mi Cristo Rey. Bendito eres, Padre, alabado sea. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Padre. Tú te mereces toda la gloria, Padre. Tú te todo, mi Dios. Alabado sea. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, heaven. Come on, heaven. Hey, Karabo Shataraba. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. So that was the lesson in how to give a testimony. Yeah. <laughs> See why we, we got to have a bigger pulpit. Yeah. Pastor Kilpatrick's, I need to move over here. He's leaning against the pulpit so he can stand up. That's why you need a good pulpit. I, revival broke out one time, had a music stand. That didn't help much at all. <laughs> you need something with big legs so you can hang on. Hallelujah. Woo! Karabosha tarabasata. Wow. And you, you see how, how it was, I mean, imparted. They received, they went back to their church. It began to fall in their church. We watched the other night, Rodney Howard Brown, at that testimony, the pastors went back. Things began to happen in their church, revival. Then it began to hit other churches. And so that's why we're, we're praying for each other every night, laying hands on, praying for that impartation. Praying for God to, to move. Lord, just, I just believe, I, you know, I was feeling something coming out of that video. God, just release, God, what you want to release in the name of Jesus. God, you're doing something greater, God, than ever been seen before in the history of man. Greater than, Lord God. Greater, Lord. Karabosha Lamba ba 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 kuriya tara ba sha tara bo sa ta. Oh ha ha, se ka tara ba sha ta. Ho ha ha ha. Woo kara bo kariendo ro ba sha tara ba. Soto ro bo kuriya tara ba ba. 
<laughs> yeah. Where, was anybody out here, were you feeling something coming off of that video? I mean, it's amazing the things God does are eternal. I mean, that's the power of testimony, and that's the power, you know, even us video and now, there's power in that to be released. Even when people watch at a later time, it's been over 20. That was probably near the start. So, uh, 96. So 24 years ago, and you can, you can st still, I mean, even uh, the quality of the video is not what we have today and the sound, and, but you can still feel the presence of heaven coming off of that thing. <clears throat> it's powerful. They just get up to, and that was a nightly thing for several years, just having different people testify. And uh, there, there's one guy I'll try to find, he had a business up north and he would he, he took all of his employees he rented vans took all of his employees down to revival there's a requirement to work for him you had to go to revival weeks paid vacation you're going to revival Woo, pastor gary was up here they took a people mover 24 passenger down there and uh they took some of the guys that worked and he's a construction uh, guy and uh, for weeks after that the, the guys would come and meet at his house before they would go out to uh, work and eight o'clock in the morning there'd be people rolling around in his front yard with people driving by looking at what's going on in the front yard <laughs> Woo. So, hey <laughs> Woo. come on heaven what did that what did that quote say um, uh, a uh, glorious disorder <laughs> glorious disorder Ooh, that's that's why it's so scary for most pastors to have revival because it's glorious disorder. It's out of order. It's out of man's order, but it's perfectly in God's order. God knows what's going on. And uh, if, if men can just get brave enough to turn him loose. It's, you know, it's amazing that God allows us to have the ability to quench the spirit. The Bible says, do not quench the spirit. So... From now on, I don't want to hear nobody say, don't pray for me again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, there was one answer. When, when, you know, when something's dead, you can bring all the programs you want to. We may have a little more entertainment, but it's still dead. And uh, you can resuscitate and try to pump something into that thing, but unless the Spirit of God comes. Man, there's only one life-giving Spirit, the Spirit of God. Unless God breathes on us again. I mean, if He can take those dead, dry bones in Ezekiel, prophesy to those bones. He began to prophesy, and those bones came alive. Surely there's hope for the church in America. Amen. If those dead bones can come alive, surely there's hope for the church in America. It can come to life again. I mean, get up and go. Woo. Hallelujah. So I wanted to read something tonight. It's, it's probably not traditional revival, but uh, we were talking about last Thursday night. We we're talking about some of the founders of the Constitution. We we're talking about that the first great awakening brought us to the place <clears throat> of, of um, declaring our independence from Britain. It was probably because of that awakening that 
that, that uh, birthing of a nation. I mean, wow. A spiritual awakening because most of the signers of the Constitution, if they weren't pastors, were involved in church or believed in God, different, some in different measures. But they, you know, we read last time that they thought that if you're going to vote for somebody, they should be religious and moral. And even uh, to the point of they should be a Christian. That was our forefathers' belief that they should be a Christian if they're going to be voted into our office. Because we have a nation with such freedom that it can be corrupted. The, the more freedom that we walk in, the easier it is to be corrupted. And that's why we have to have people with morals. And, uh, you know, I, I really don't think their meaning was religion. If they would have said it now, that it specifically said Christianity. It wasn't just any religion. Their, I mean, their thoughts were Christians. Yes. And so, Ronald Reagan in a speech that he shares, it, it's a phenomenal speech. But I want to read the part about the signing of the Constitution that he uh, put in here. And he says, I was told by this man that the story could be found in the writings of Jefferson. I confess I never researched or made an effort to verify it. Perhaps it is only legend. But story or legend, he described the atmosphere the strain, the debate, and that as man for the first time faced the consequences of such an irretrievable act. I mean, they're about to sign a treason paper. The wells resounded with the dreaded word of treason as its price. The gallows... And the headman's axe. As the day wore on, the issue hung in the balance. So they're deliberating over this declaration of independence. And then, according to the story, a man rose in the small gallery. He was not a young man. And he was obviously calling on all the energy he could muster. Citing the grievances that had brought them to this moment, he said, sign the parchment. They may turn every tree into a gallow. Every home into a grave, and yet the words of this parchment can never die. For the mechanic in his workmanship, they will be words of hope. To the slave in the mines, freedom. And he added, if my hands were freezing in death, I would sign that parchment with my last ounce of strength. Sign, sign, if the next moment the noose is around your neck. Sign, even if the, if the hell is ringing with the sound of the headman's axe. For that parchment will be the textbook of freedom. The Bible of the rights of man forever. And then it is said he fell back exhausted. But 56 delegates swept by his eloquence signed the Declaration of Independence. A document destined to be as immortal as any work of man can be. And according to the story, when they turned around to thank him for his timely oratory, he could not be found. Uh, <laughs> Woo! Nor were there any who knew who he was or how he had come in or gone out. How he had come in or gone out through the locked and guarded doors. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
You don't think God wasn't involved in this nation? Amen. Well, I say, whether story or legend, the signing of this document that day in Independence Hall was miracle enough. 56 men, a little band so unique we have never seen their likes since. Pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. 16 gave their lives. Most gave their fortunes, and all of them persevered their sacred honor. What manner of men were they? Certainly they were not unwashed revolutionary rabble, nor were they adventurers in a heroic mood. 24 were lawyers and jurists. 11 were merchants and tradesmen. 9 were farmers. They were men who would achieve security but valued freedom more. They'd achieved security, but they valued their freedom more. See, we've come to a place where we value our security more than our freedom. What price did they pay? John Hart was driven from the side of his desperately ill wife. After more than a year of living almost as an animal in the forest and in caves, he returned to find his wife had died and his children had vanished. He never saw them again. His property was destroyed and he died of a broken heart, but with no regret. Only pride in the part he had played that day in Independence Hall. Carter Braxton of Virginia lost all of his ships. They were sold to pay debts. He died in rags. So it was with Ellery, Clymer, Hall, Walton, Gwinnett, Rutledge, Morris, Livingston, Middleton, Nelson, learning that the Cornwalls were using his home for a headquarters, the British, personally begged Washington to fire on him and destroy his home. He died bankrupt. It has never been reported that any of these men expressed bitterness or renounced their action as not worth the price. 56 rank and file. Ordinary citizens had founded a nation that grew from sea to signing sea. Five million farms, quiet villages, cities that never slept, all done with an area redevelop without an area redevelopment plan urban renewal or ur- or rural legal assistance program <laughs> now we are a nation of 211 million now 350 million with a pedigree that includes bloodlines from every corner of the world we have shed that american melting pot blood in every corner of the world usually in defense of someone's freedom. Those who remained of that remarkable band, we call our founding fathers, tied up some of the loose ends about a dozen years after the revolution. It, has, it had been the first revolution in all man's history that did not just exchange one set of rules for another. This had been a philosophical revolution. The culmination of man's dreams for 6,000 years were formalized with the Constitution, probably the most unique document ever drawn in the long history of man's relation to man. I know there have been other constitutions. New ones are being drawn today by newly emerging nations, most of them, even one one of them, the Soviet Union, contain Many of the same guarantees as our own constitution. And still there is a difference. The difference is so subtle that we often overlook it. But it is so, it is so great that it tells the whole story. 
their constitution say, government grants you these rights. And ours said, you are born with these rights. They are yours by the grace of God. And no government on earth can take that away from you. Woo! Amen. I hope people over the air, over the media yeah. are hearing this. I hope our people that say, well, I don't know if I should vote or not because our Constitution stands right now in, in the midst of uh, being ripped apart. Yeah. And uh, in the decision to try to make this into a socialized communist nation right. where our rights, that's what they want. They want. The, your rights to come from them so they grant you the right to do these things instead of our rights coming from almighty God that's what makes the difference because God formed this country with men that said these rights come from God what amazing men that I mean how could they be atheists and people and, and they would write in this that your freedoms come from God your rights come from God. I mean, if it was a group of atheists, I don't think they would say that. This is Ronald Reagan's speech. It's a good question. It's January the 25th, 1974. Ronald Reagan, we will be a city upon a hill. And that's just like half, I mean, a third of the speech. You should read, it is an amazing speech. Whoever wrote it, I doubt if he wrote it, but whoever wrote it did an amazing yeah. job. God, give us leaders in our synod, in our house Amen. that will rise back up, God, to those founding fathers we had that saw the value of freedom, saw the value of individual rights, saw the value of our rights given to us by God. Father, that they're not driven by power and wanting to rule when most of them can't even rule themselves. So we're making this, it's going over the airwaves, we're making this a declaration over the airwaves, God. That you will raise up mighty men and women of God again. That you will bring revival, God. Revival of our morals. Revival of our Christianity. Revival in our churches again, God. Revival in our pulpits, God. Have mercy on us for allowing us to be so compromised and allow our nation to go down the tubes, God. When we are the pillar and the ground of truth. It's up to us. Shit. Yeah. 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 Yes, 
Satarabo Kuriataraba. Our nation lies in peril at this time. All the Karaboshata, all of the polls say that President Trump is behind. I don't know where they get these polls, but yeah, disregard. But it does, it does drive us to the need of prayer. And we are so close. I mean, we're a few days away from this pivotal time in the history of our nation. So I really feel like tonight I wanted to read that and I wanted us to spend some time praying about this situation that God will move in this situation. God, you will, you will uphold what you started, God, over 200 years ago. God, with those men that you empowered, I believe, by the Holy Spirit, God, you had a purpose for freedom, God, that we would be free indeed. That we would be a city that is set on a hill, Lord. We would be a light to the world. And God, we won't turn our back on it now, God. We won't lose what you've given us, God. God, have mercy on us. God, have mercy on us. Move over the hearts of people as they go into the voting booths during these next few days, God. Move over the hearts. God, we say there'll be no illegal ballots, God. Anything that's being done in the darkness to flip the ballots will be brought to the light. God, nothing will be done behind the curtains. Father, we pray even more will be exposed in the next few days. God, it'll be brought to the light. Everything is being done in the darkness. God, we pray that uh, Twitter will have a flip out and won't know what they're trying to stop. I pray, that God, these things will go through on Twitter and Facebook. Ah, that'll bust wide open, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that our FBI, FBI, our CIA, God, our, our judicial system, our justice over our nation, God, will, will, they will bring justice, Lord God. Let them bring justice to our nation, God. Kata, we pray for Mr. Barr in the name of Jesus, God. The DOJ will take a stand and do what's right. It's time to bring these criminals before their court. The Chinese will not run this nation. They'll not own this nation. They'll not have a say-so in this nation. This is our inheritance. Our forefathers paid a price. Jesus paid a price for this to be our inheritance. God, that you will light this nation on revival fire. God, that we will bring the kingdom of God to a lost and dying world. There'll be no nation in the world that won't hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray India will open. I pray Pakistan will open. I pray Somalia will open. God, I pray North Korea will open. I pray Russia will open. I pray China will be open in the name of Jesus. Everything that stands against you, God, will be broken down. It's your promise, God, that we would make disciples of all nations. God, there'll not be a nation hidden in the Pacific. No island will be untouched by the gospel. No nation will be untouched. No communist will be untouched. No socialist will be untouched. God, I pray you bring an awakening in Venezuela in the name of Jesus. I pray that you bring an awakening in Cuba. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the Lord and against his church. It cannot stand against it. Woo! 
You played your cards, devil. It's about time you got trumped. If, if the Lord's putting something on your heart to pray, I want you to come. You know, if God's leading you to pray in something, I want you to come and lead us in a prayer. Lord, I declare before heaven and earth that Joe Biden will be revealed before Hallelujah. next Tuesday and that he will step down as a matter of righteousness. Father, that you move upon this situation. We just say yes, in Jesus' name, the best is yet to come. Revive us, oh God. Woo, come on. Something in your heart to pray. Come and pray. Lord, we stir up the gift of God. We're pressing in tonight. God, this thing is not going to go by without us doing our part, Lord God. Without us pressing in. Father, you gave us Jesus. Jesus, you fulfilled the very words. The very things that the Father had called you to. And then you sent us the Holy Spirit. And you, Holy Spirit, are so operational in this hour as we've never seen the Godhead move in this day, in this hour. You are moving behind the scenes in so many different ways. But Lord, we ask that, Lord, I know this is your heart and sometimes difficult to pray. But that you would get a hold of every heart of every one of these deceivers. As Bill was praying for the, for all the the uh, the different the, the different areas of life that people have just gone the communists and all those different people. Lord, we ask that you would go, you would deal, and you would deal with them right there in their homes. Lord, even in the night that you when they're sleeping, that you would go to each and every one of these people. That you would go to this, these that are so corrupted, Lord, in, in, Lord, in yes, every, yes. Uh, across the board, each and every, each and every person that has been in this evil assault, to this destruction that the enemy has been moving through to bring destruction to this nation. And not only this nation, because the world will be affected by what takes place in this next election in ways that we know not of. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you that even now, in this hour, you are visiting them in the night. And we have prayed that prayer many times. Yes. But let it be so, yes. even now, that you go and you are going to yes. each and every one of them, even as you did, even as you did with Pilate's wife. You came and you spoke to her, Lord. You spoke to her in those days. And Lord, we thank you that you're moving even now. And that you are coming even now. And you are speaking. You are increasing even now. Your volume. Lord, wherever they're at. And let, it, let these next few days be a time of your moving through this land as never before. From the Lord, from the very highest place, Lord, in office to the very, very place, Lord, throughout the government, throughout this land, throughout your people, Lord, that your people will rise up, that your people, that yes. we would rise yes. up, and that we would do what we need to do in this hour. Lord, yeah. we ask that you would move in your power, Holy Spirit, in your power in this hour, that you would move as you have never moved upon the face of this earth, upon America. And Lord, we know that you are raising up the intercessors all over the world to pray for this election even now. We know that you're awakening the intercessors throughout the land to awaken each and every one of your people to rise up and walk as sons of God. No longer the tail. We are the head. Lord, we are, we are above and not beneath. Yes. Lord, you have decreed yes. the very words of who we are. And Lord, that your body, that our, your body of Christ would begin to rise up. Your body would begin to rise up and be who we are in this hour as never 
before on the face of the earth. Rise up, body of Christ. Yes. Woo! And you're not only rising up, but rise up in the dunamis, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Whoa, rise up, O body of Christ. Lord, we ask also, Holy Spirit, that you would intervene. Lord, you would just come, even in the night, that you would visit your body of believers. You would fill them with your Holy Spirit. You would fill them, even now, Holy Spirit, you would fill them across this world, across this land, that they would arise and walk in your power. In Jesus' name. Woo! Hey. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we declare from this mountain, Lord God, we speak to the compromised churches in Jesus' name. We command in the name of Jesus that you rise up in Jesus' name. And we strip off and we loose compromise in the body of yes. Christ. That yes. there will be yes. a division between the goats and the sheep churches. Yes. That there will no longer be a toleration for compromising of the word of God and neglecting the cross and the blood in Jesus' name. That, Father God, the pastors and shepherds will rise up with a word of fire yeah. on their mouths, Lord God. And they will speak the truth with fire. And, Father God, we lift up one of the two pastors. That one in the courts. He has come out and he has blasted President Trump. He has a platform now that is going national. Father God, forgive him, Lord God. We thank you, God, for visiting them. Oh, God. Forgive him, Father God. And Father God, we right now, we send the host to the airwaves over his broadcast that you would strip them. You would have them cease and desist in Jesus' name. That there will be no stumbling, Lord God, in the body of Christ. God, forgive us. You gave him and delivered a victory to that church. Forgive them, Lord God, for spitting it back in your face and for leading people astray. Father God, the compromise, the compromise in the body of Christ. Oh, we speak life. We speak resurrection life. In the churches, Father, in America. Because this land, Father God, that you chose leads the world. And yes. Father God, we speak life. We speak resurrection in Jesus' name. Woo. And Come God, on, we him. declare that with that being spoken, that the pastors within this nation are going to rise up and speak for the president of the United States. Yes. That the very yes. thing, every bit of that negative press is going to be thrown back in the face of the enemy because this is going to light a fire within the pastors of this nation yes. to raise their voices as never before. I pray, God, that we are now coming upon the offense and no longer the defense. That, God, you turned COVID into an act of war against the enemy because it has caused the church to rise up and let their voices be heard again. That, God, you are awakening the church through this. You are awakening the church through this in Jesus' name. Yes. And we declare yes. in Jesus' yes. name that they are no longer going to remain silent. They are no longer going to sit down and let others dictate what we believe, how yes. we believe it. Yes. No longer will
when we allow others to be our voice because our voice is back and you are giving us a voice to use with the megaphone. And so we just declare, God, that they're going to rise up even more, God. We're seeing a many, many people all of a sudden turning to President Trump that have followers of 37 million that you would never expect. So it's already turning for the good. Yeah. God, I come against the spirit of fear in this nation from going to the polls. We break off that spirit that the media is trying to stir up regarding COVID, saying it's too dangerous to go out. And we declare that that fear goes in Jesus' name. We pray that the Christians are going to rise up and that the millions upon millions upon millions yes. who have never voted before... Yes are yes. going to get up yes. and are going to go and vote in Jesus' name. That God, you are going, we send our hosts forth to accompany those that would try to be attacked before going. That we send our host in Jesus' name. We send our host to every polling location. That God, you stir up those that are over that God, that they begin to see fraud and they nip it. That the hosts yes. are there to look over and say, mm, something's going on. Something's going on. Lord, we speak to every mail carrier that any who have evil intention, we speak conviction to their spirit right now in Jesus' name. And just as my mom prayed, Gabriel, that you accompany every ballot. Every ballot makes it to where it needs to go in Jesus' name. That God, that God, 2016 was a shock for many people. 2020 is going to be even better. Amen. That it's going to be even more of a landslide in Jesus' name. Because God, we want someone who stands for life. Yes. It comes down to life. If anything, it comes down to life. And I pray, God, that you go into every believer who is on the fence about this. And you say, you better vote for life. Woo. That is what Come is at on, stake. Is life in Jesus' name. Freedom is at stake. Life is at stake. The future generations are at stake. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.